Good afternoon to you, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. It is Wednesday afternoon here, uh, the 21st day of September 2022, and quite a serious situation getting ready to unfold for our friends up in Canada, Nova Scotia in particular, maybe Newfoundland as well. I mean, certainly Newfoundland, uh, potentially a historic event up there as Fiona comes out of the tropics and then into the subtropics and finally up into those higher latitudes where it's going to transition into this extremely powerful and large storm uh, resembling something like Hurricane Sandy where it transitioned over into what a lot of people in the uh, media world refer to as Superstorm. Um, yes, this could be something similar to that up in Atlantic Canada, the Canadian Maritimes region. And then of course we need to watch what could be happening into the Caribbean uh, and beyond over the next several days with Invest Area 98L. Today it's impacting with some rain and squally conditions, the Windward Islands. So there's the setup, a lot going on, the hurricane season kicking into high gear uh, all of a sudden here. Look at this, there's several areas here. We have Fiona, Category 4 now, pressure pretty low there, 937 millibars. There's Gaston, which was very surprising, and uh, 65 mile per hour. And by the way, these two together will really start to ramp up the ACE score for this year. I know a lot of people couldn't care less if they tried, but the ACE score is important, and uh, that score is going to go up. It's a scientific measurement of the energy expended from tropical cyclones. This is 98L, well on its way to becoming a depression. I think it's just a matter of time. And then a couple of other disturbances here, and then there's even more energy over Africa. And it's still, you know, we're in the last uh, third of September, and we have all of October and all of November with that strengthening La Nina. It just keeps on and on here, it looks like, after a very late start. And certainly keeping on and on in the eastern Pacific, another area expected to develop and eventually head off into the direction of the open Pacific, which is obviously good news for folks in Mexico. So the track map currently just, I say just, we got our hands full with these. We have Fiona as of the two o'clock advisory, the intermediate advisory, large and intense hurricane Fiona continues northward is the headline. Again, 130 mile per hour winds, that's a category four moving north at eight. And then we have Gaston over here in the open Atlantic, uh, maintaining its strength at 65 miles per hour. And we will eventually add uh, within the next few days, I do believe something down in this area um, and if something doesn't get named over here or over here first, this would be Hermine, and then something out here could be Ian or it could be flipped. We shall see what we shall see. Um, so real quick, let's zoom in our friends in Bermuda. Outside of the Cone of Uncertainty, one of the many names given to this cone here, uh, and that's good news in one sense. Certainly the core should stay away from Bermuda, but that's not going to keep uh, the potential for uh, tropical storm conditions, big waves, maybe some hurricane force wind gusts at some of those higher elevations. Yes, Bermuda has higher elevations. It's not flat like the Everglades. Uh, it's made out of limestone out there. Uh, several islands make up Bermuda. It's not just one island. If we zoom in here, you can really see that. Love the interactive map. You can tell I like showing this off. Looks like a fish hook here and that southerly flow that will come around at first, all of these south and east facing beaches could get pummeled with some pretty big waves. And then as Fiona goes by, those northwest winds from that large circulation will make things very blustery. Probably going to have some power outage issues, a few squalls. Certainly no time to be in any kind of a boat out there. Just kind of hunker down, go to the swizzle and enjoy a rum swizzle or a dark and stormy and just chill. Um, and I'm serious, I know the owner of the Swizzle, uh, a fantastic gent, and our good friend Howard over there as well. Everybody, you got lucky with this one in Bermuda, that is for sure, but not the same can be said, it looks like, for Canada up here. Uh, I mean, wow, how often do we see this uh, transitioning from a Category 3 true hurricane, and it's going to leave the warm waters of the Atlantic through here, the waters cool off pretty quickly here near the Sable Island Bank, and uh, but it'll be moving quickly. It'll be getting some energy from this upper level trough that'll be digging in, kind of capturing it, phasing with it, and pinwheeling it in, similar to Sandy. So that baroclinic process that we call it gets real complicated with meteorology, but you basically take all of that heat 
from this massive heat engine and you mix it up with the energy of a mid-latitude trough and you get this remarkable transformation into an extra tropical or mid-latitude sort of uh, like you remember in Star Wars and I'm definitely serious here okay I'm not trying to be funny when Obi-Wan Kenobi said to Darth Vader if you strike me down I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine that's what happens with these systems sometimes they get sort of struck down they lose that tropical characteristics where it's warm core throughout and they transition into something more powerful than we can possibly imagine and that is not hyperbole here wait till I show you some of the modeling indicating pressures uh, down in the 920 millibar range potentially which would be record-setting for Canada so the potential for storm surge and massive waves all throughout this region up here is going to be very high all the way up into the Gulf of St. Lawrence we're hoping to go up there I've got plans to drive a bunch of equipment up there and if it wasn't for 98L it would just be like yeah no problem we're gonna get up there we're gonna nail this but I gotta make sure we can get back in time for what might be happening with 98L so that's a very fluid situation we'll get to that in just a moment I don't want to start injecting my problems onto the situation but it is problematic because I want to be able to observe and capture the impacts from this and it could be historic and we've got equipment that can measure this uh, very precisely so I'm torn how do we get there we we need a private jet all right so uh, that notwithstanding we'll get back to that in just a minute all right so the satellite animation this afternoon large there it is very large Fiona there's the core there or roughly that the core would be closer to the center but that's the central dense overcast a uh, very well established outflow in the upper levels of the atmosphere a little bit of southerly shear pushing on it that's why it's just somewhat lopsided and it's not symmetrical like we saw with Irma for an example and, and that's good we don't need this thing ramping up to 180 miles per hour or any nonsense like that and look at Gaston up here are you kidding me that is approaching again 40 degrees north latitude Wow and then we have a disturbance right there there's another one curling off Africa and then that is 98L which a lot of people obviously watching the evolution of this over the coming days as it heads into the Caribbean and looks to get into some very favorable conditions real quick zooming in on Fiona there's that central dense overcast the core of the strongest winds will be right there near the eye and what we call the eye wall your classic outflow in the upper levels of the atmosphere uh, there are some lower thicker clouds near Bermuda but above them a nice cirrus deck if these low clouds can get out of there Howard and Jay and others over in Bermuda you could have a, an amazing sunset tonight that feathered look to the clouds again it's just a shame these hurricanes cause so much uh, chaos and misery and death and destruction and anxiety because it is a remarkable feat of, of nature the atmosphere and the ocean something to really marvel at and have respect for and that certainly is uh, what I do I, I mean it's just amazing and I'm very privileged to be able to study them up close and personal so look there's the rotation you can see it broad rotation here with our tropical wave interacting with parts of the windwards down here and even northeastern portions of the continent of South America for goodness sakes but uh, it'll gradually get better organized look there's a couple of interesting things watch right here these little puffs of clouds that stream south like that I'm gonna draw on them then I'll take it away see it right there let it run again that is some northerly shear from that massive outflow channel coming down from Fiona right there's another example so if Fiona wasn't there this would probably be already organized and could already be a tropical storm if not stronger so Fiona kind of bailing out the windward islands here but that being said still some squally conditions flooding uh, rains etc for Trinidad Tobago and some of these other islands down here maybe even portions of Barbados something else I noticed look right here it looks like dust or dirt or <laughs> not dirt but what is that coming off is that just some weird reflection it, it just looks to me hopefully this being recorded in high def you'll be able to see that but it just looks weird almost like dust coming off of uh, South America down there but it shouldn't be because we have the Amazon and it's not supposed to be dusty 
in uh, South America, but I just noticed that these, that weird haze. Anyway, let's get on to the modeling real quick here. This is the Euro uh, from the 12Z run today, ECMWF. The vorticity signature, that is what it looks like. If you forgot, there it is. A very well-defined Category 4 hurricane. That is what the vorticity looks like at the lower levels of the atmosphere. 850 millibars, that's about 5,000 feet up. A less intense system would be Gaston, so a wonderful example of the different phases that I look for. And there's a weak uh, system there. A strong tropical wave with weak cyclonic turning. And the same is said for 98L right there. So I'm telling you, what a great example. I'm going to save this image uh, when I am done. i got to remember, <laughs> because I want to show this sometime when things are dead and we're like, well, what are we looking for? This is a great example of that. So let's move this on out. This is every 24 hours. We're at the current conditions as of this morning, 8 a.m. today. So this is 8 a.m. Whoops, it jumped ahead. I hit the wrong button. Slow down, Mark. 8 a.m. tomorrow. There we go. And then uh, on Friday, it passes uh, just to the west of Bermuda, again, enough so that hurricane conditions should stay away. Bermuda is right there, and I'll just hit the arrow key to move this forward. So yeah, you know, you're going to get some wind and some squalls, but nothing like what it could have been. I think that goes without saying. Finally, watch this up here in Canada by Friday morning, I'm sorry, Saturday morning, wow. A massive area of low pressure. It phases with a, a piece of the jet stream up there. I'll show you that right here on the upper dynamics. Um, there's that trough coming in. All right, you see it right there. That's the whole reason that Fiona is not coming up and hitting the U.S. And then watch what happens. It phases with that. It gets captured and just bombs out. Even the Euro, a global model, showing 933 millibars as that crosses eastern Nova Scotia. Uh, just over and to the west of um, Cape Breton. I mean, wow, and not in a good way. Uh, this could be really, really devastating. So you can see my angst that I want to get up there with our equipment and capture this from a scientific and a visual perspective because, I mean, good grief, unbelievable what we're seeing here. All right, so let me go back to the lower dynamics real quick. I do want to change the, uh, hold on, where is it? That's the one I'm looking for. No, it's not. It's the top one. One more time, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. And then I want to switch it over to the Western Atlantic domain. We are out at 72 hours. And there's our system into the Caribbean. 96, 120. And then finally, day 6, day 7. Clearly, you see, we have a problem. And that goes back to being my problem. I can't be in Canada and down here at the same time. And I know you'd be like, dude, why don't you just fly into Halifax or whatever? Well, uh, I don't get to take all the equipment that I want to take with me if I do that. Uh, there's the lithium batteries and just whatever. And if Fiona is big enough or it shifts west more, Halifax could get rolled up to the point that I couldn't even fly out of there to get down back to Florida. So I think staying in the vehicle, driving on up there, I've got my friend Matt coming, our colleague and supporter, all wrapped up into one, and God bless him, this guy is so patient with me. Um, we're going to drive, and we're going to go for it, and you know, if we have to turn around even in Maine and say, you know, we cannot miss a potential major hurricane landfall if it were to happen. That's the beauty of it. Being in a vehicle, we will be in control of our own fate, much more than relying on airlines, which have a whole set of problems in and of themselves, and then the hurricane could make things worse in Halifax, and we're stuck, not going to let that happen, all right? So stay tuned. We'll certainly be posting updates on Twitter. I'll be doing these updates as well throughout our journey. But the plan now is for Matt and I to head our, uh, make our way up to uh, the eastern portions of Nova Scotia and then try to get the heck out of there um, as quick as we can. And here's an example. This is the H Wharf. This is Fiona. It goes on up. It passes Bermuda. Again, I dare say comfortably to the west, uh, hopefully. Bermuda is right here. There you go. And this is the 10 meter wind. All right, right there, 10 meter wind, about 33 feet above ground level. And it's in that orange to red area. So, you know, 50 to 60 knots wouldn't be surprising. Some hurricane force winds at the higher hilltops, sure. 
and massive waves coming in there on the south and southeast side. Can't wait to see some of the video that Howard provides um, as this goes by. And uh, yeah, look at that. And even on the back side as this goes by, still very blustery through 12Z. That's uh, 8 a.m. Eastern Time Friday. So, And then look at the pressure there. Wow, really starting to bomb out as it interacts with the energy from the trough. It approaches the northwest Atlantic, starts to come into the range there of the Canadian Maritimes um, to Nova Scotia in particular. Sydney is located right in here, and that is our destination technically. Uh, I mean, we could try to get down here if we need to. We'll figure it out. That would certainly cut off several hours. But, I mean, this is 10-meter wind, and there's a lot of areas up here that are higher than that. There's bluffs. You know, there's some elevation. It's not flat everywhere either. This is really going to be bad for our friends up here in eastern Nova Scotia. So I really hope to heck we can make it up there, Matt and myself, to document this. And then it kind of looks like it slows down just a little bit. You know what I mean? It doesn't just race across. Uh, that's what I mean. I mean, you know, Halifax should be far enough away, but I just can't risk flying in there, and then we get stuck for any other reason. Uh, but anyway, like I said, we'll keep you posted on that. I'm hoping we can make it. If we can't, it's because we need to be in Florida or something else. All right? All right, real quick, uh, the impacts from Fiona, not just Bermuda and Canada, eastern North Carolina, elsewhere along the East Coast. Check weather.gov if you're going to go to the beach over the next few days because the swells could be substantial. Might even get some minor ocean overwash on some of the beaches. Just check your local area. Uh, this is just happens to be out of Newport Moorhead City Weather Service office. Check, again, weather.gov. Put in the zip code of the beach area that you are interested in, and it'll tell you all about it. All right, a couple other things before I let you go. Again, a big reason why Fiona will be as strong as it is up here. Water temperatures several degrees warmer than they should be this time of year and that trough interaction up there, all going to combine to give us just, a, again, a historic event there in uh, the Canadian Maritimes, unfortunately. And then, of course, all through the potential path here, wherever it may be, for 98L, I can zoom in and show you that. Uh, this is where it is currently through here, and the entire area from there on out, depending on what the path is, if you take the, uh, the euro at face value, Everything is above average. Everything is above average by at least a quarter to a half a degree, and that's enough to give us a potentially significant hurricane threat for uh, somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. There's still enough time that the system could move farther west and sort of bury itself in Central America, but that's not looking likely. But it is a possibility, um, and we'll see as that evolves. I know a lot of people are going to be watching that. But... Our immediate attention, of course, is on Fiona and what it does. So I'm going to start driving myself this afternoon in a few hours. I'm going to go up to Washington, D.C. area. Matt flies in tomorrow to Dulles. We will then drive like crazy, uh, take shifts, and get into Canada and just do the best we can with two of us. We can safely do that. That is paramount. We're taking a weather station to get the wind speed. We have unmanned cameras that we can put out there to provide some live video. I mean, if it happens at night, that's really going to stink. It's like, oh, my goodness, it's, it's hard on us, hard on the people there. Nighttime, as we all know, for these events just totally sucks. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, but we'll, we'll keep you posted. And if we have to turn around, or even tomorrow afternoon, it's like we just can't do it. Um, you know, that's the way it goes because I cannot abandon – uh, what might happen in the Gulf of Mexico and be in two places at once. There's just no way to do it, unfortunately. So stay tuned. A real cliffhanger coming up for sure. Uh, but we, we're going to make a, a good effort at it. That is also for sure. People that know me know I go 110% on this stuff, sometimes to my detriment at, at the peril of not sleeping enough. But that's why I have help, and that is very important, and I appreciate that, Matt, one of our patrons from our crowdfunding project. All right, let me get this online for you. As always, thanks for tuning in. I'll be back in the morning with another update, of course, for you with the What's Up segment. Until then, have a great rest of your Wednesday. I am Mark Suttoth for Hurricane Track. I'll talk to you again tomorrow morning.